Welcome busy gamers. Today we're going to be looking at Last Epoch. If you're familiar with this first look series, feel free to go ahead and skip to the section you're most interested in. And if you're looking for the review, I'll of course be putting that in the end card or the show notes as soon as it's posted. So what's a first look? Basically, I want you all to know how I feel about a game early on. So I'm going to put a timer up for 30 minutes and give you my live thoughts and reactions while I play. I'll then give a short summary at the end without spoiling much of the game. So why did we choose this game and what is it? Last Epoch was developed and published by 11th Hour Games, and it seems to be garnering a growing level of attention from the ARPG community as it nears the end of its beta and early access period. Now, this is a long beta and early access period. It actually came out in April 30th of 2019, so we are extending this pretty heavily. In Last Epoch, you're going to be choosing from five core classes and eventually developing into one of three additional mastery classes that are available to each of the core builds. The story centers around the world itself as you appear to be traveling back and forth in time to shape Itera's future by changing its dark past. There is a whole lot to unpack on this game, and it really seems to be trying to ride the line between Path of Exile because Path of Exile is so extraordinarily deep and complex, but it's just not that accessible to some gamers. And games like Diablo or Diablo 4, which tend to be a lot easier with more basic skill trees and are meant for more of the casual gamer. I don't know if they're going to strike the right balance here. They have over 100 skill trees in it, and each skill tree has its own augment tree that allows you to control, alter, and empower your playstyle. There's a lot of freedom here, there's a lot of customization here, but is it going to be too much for a lot of the viewers of this channel? I think that's something that's going to be really important to see, and the reason we're covering this is basically because with all of the buzz around Diablo 4, with the excitement of the beta and things of that nature, several of my viewers reached out to me and they said, we think you should look at this particular game, it's either better or it's better for a specific type of person. So. Let's go ahead and dive in and give Last Epoch a try. We'll be doing our class selection here. Uh, so though, like I said in the intro, there are five different classes to pick from. We have our emo goth chick over here with the acolyte. Uh, so all classes are gender and model locked. So you will, you will look like the model here. Uh, it looks like the third mastery here is locked, the warlock. So. I would assume this is either a in development thing or is something that's just not available until you've beaten the game the first time. But you've got your necromancer. Uh, I tend to gravitate towards that, so that is definitely in contention here. Uh, we have our primalist, uh, which very much looks like a druid. I hate this face model. Uh, there is something wrong graphically with it in my mind, and so that kind of bothers me. Uh, but we can do beastmaster, so a pet version uh, shaman which appears to be a little bit more like a caster version and then druid your your traditional transforming class uh, which also kind of resonates with me you have your mage or your sorcerer here i'll click into it just to give you the sorcerer spellblade or rune master uh, which unfortunately the one that entertains me or excites me the most is locked you get your rogue i skip that in most games and then we have our sentinel or our warrior class now, this is the first time I've played, so I think we're going to stick with something that feels easy. And for me, something that feels easy is going to be a warrior. So I think I'm just going to give this guy a try here. I like the idea of a Void Knight or a Paladin. I think I'm going to be going Shadow Knight style. So uh, let's go Sentinel and build into a Void Knight. I will give my standard name of Alturus, and we will get going. Uh, inevitably, I am likely to die. It's my first time playing, so we're going to go with standard because I wouldn't want to cut this sh uh, first look too short here. Uh, and then solo account found. I would assume this is just your character will not be able to party with or obtain items found by other players. will have access to items and resources found by your other account found characters. Items are also partitioned by mode and cycle as normal. Um, I don't know that this is really a big deal for me. We're going to leave it off for now. I'm unlikely to play with other people for my first time through regardless. Uh, but just because I don't know what pushing in game is going to be like, we're going to leave it off for today. We are not going to do cutscenes here. 
want to get straight into the gameplay and let you all figure out how it's going to go. Plus, if there are too many story spoilers there, I just want to avoid that for a first look video. Uh, it seems like the opening area might be quite pretty based on that loading screen, though it was a little longer than I expected. So you can either use a left click or a joystick, it seems like. So that is interesting. I like the fact that there is controller support for this game. So I'll likely switch back and forth as I'm talking here, just to give you a good idea of what that would actually look like. Your base skills are, I like that, like I said, just kind of basic. So we don't have a whole lot going on here. Got a jade ring to start off with, and since it's got dodge rating, we're probably going to just go straight for it. Now, I assume my uh, heavily armor-clad character is not really going to be uh, dodge moving out of anyone's way. Uh, but we'll still put it on because it's better than nothing. Got a couple bugs to start out with. Taking damage, use health potions. Found frequently and can be bought from vendors. Makes sense. Uh, we've got a basic attack that does 21 damage per second. I would guess this would scale based on my weapon damage. We have Vengeance. It is also a melee attack, so it doesn't take any mana. Uh, it gives 22 damage per second, so we're going to be using that. And then in the next two seconds, she'll Reposit, taking 25% less damage and striking another nearby enemy. Uh, I don't know why Q isn't just my standard mapped attack. I am certain that I could remap it, but just in case there's a reason I'd want to use my normal attack at some point, we'll leave, we'll leave them both paired for now. Just casually fighting some enemies here. It looks like our quests are put in the right side here. Uh, the first one's just a long detour, and it says head to the traveler's camp. All right, we are already level two. That was nice and quick. Our next skill is Warpath. Spin towards the mouse while you hold down the ability key, striking nearby enemies as you move. Yeah, this is a spin to win that people really like doing for warrior classes. Uh, I say that back from my League of Legends days. Those are shameful and behind me, but it was the thing that I played back in the day. Uh, and then again, there's been a lot of Diablo builds where you could basically just become a spinning warrior. So I haven't decided how I feel about that just yet, but uh, for now it's, uh, it's, it's going to happen. We have an upgrade likely to our weapon. It's a blue, so plus 13 melee damage, a little bit faster... This is odd. The sword says it's fast at 1.12, and a base attack rate of 0.98 is just average. So maybe that means 1.12 attacks per second instead of 0.98 attacks per second. We're still going to use a blue weapon, and I am just going to straight up drop anything that's white. I cannot imagine that they will be worthwhile. We'll check our skill sets again. We've got 30 and 32, so... Uh, that skill remains the highest damage regardless, and uh, it is looking more and more like there's no no reason for my main attack or my base attack to be there. So it's a little awkward. I wish it would do a better job explaining that, or maybe it would just automatically upgrade my base attack uh, if there's no reason, but it's possible that I'm just not understanding. So we've got a stash, like in most games, where you can transfer things between characters. Gives you a reason to loot things uh, for other things. And then we just have a base shop. I, I didn't pick anything up, so that shop's not going to do me any good. Uh, and then all we've got is a long detour continuing west through the southern plateau. So we're going to just uh, keep going. Keep going, keep spinning. Yes, I could have talked to all those villagers, but let's, let's be honest. Uh, if you're the person who did that, you do not want to see me do it. Uh, and most of us will walk straight past. Some some ARPGs are story focused, uh, Diablo being one of them. I don't necessarily believe this is one. We're going to figure that out a little bit as we go. There's a time traveling mechanic in this game, as I discussed earlier, uh, which kind of throws me off, if I'm being honest. I, I have a little bit of concerns about that, um, because if, if I'm sitting here and I am playing uh, in a manner that would, would have me be strong for a modern era or a classical era as soon as i change my time and i'm now in the modern era all my gear is completely outclassed just by modern technology so i'm wondering how they're going to do the time traveler how the ha travel how that's going to be represented 
And it's probably one of my, my bigger or more core concerns. Um, so far, you know, I, I definitely feel powerful. I will say I feel like the, the mob density might be a little low. Um, but I am leveling up relatively quickly. All my stuff feels pretty powerful. Uh, there's good impact to the skills. That hammer throw seemed to do a lot of damage. So all of that, straight off the bat, feels good. Uh, has decent impact on the screen. It seems to be giving out quite a lot of gear as we go. And so I've only been picking up blue items or better. Uh, so we now have new armor. It has the exact same amount of armor. It just adds additional mana and some fire resistance. We'll go ahead and wear it, though I am doubting that this character does a lot of mana things. At least it doesn't right now, right? Nothing, nothing I have outside of my spin does much mana. But this does take a little away every second. It's a good crowd clearing skill. Doesn't do a whole lot of damage. If I were fighting just a single thing, I think I would be avoiding it. Uh, there's a health potion. It's the first time I've seen one of those drop. Uh, we've got a new blue helmet that we're probably going to be using. Club. Yeah, it's still technically better to use my one-on-one -on -one attack uh, when I'm out of big groups. So I can't, I can't tell if these are rare enemies. So I see a little bit of a blue highlight in their nameplate. Uh, and games like Diablo have taught me that those are rare enemies. They're more likely to be dropping uh, blue or red or uh, escalated item levels. So I am making those a priority. Definitely feel strong. All the things that I've equipped have changed my look, which I like. Uh, okay, it looks like we have a plus down here. So I missed something during my level up. Passive system introduction. Okay, I'm being attacked while this is happening. Gain passive points by leveling up and completing quests. You have access to basic passives. I am going to die. Yep, so I died because I was reading something else during that. I could have X'd out, but I kind of wanted to read that. I Honestly, that's probably the most damage I've taken. Uh, so we'll just continue to go. Uh, it looks like we have shrines in this game, just like we have in most others. And shrines are just going to give you passive benefits. So this particular one gives me move speed, uh, which is actually really convenient in games. We've got a new skill again, so we've got a hammer throw and we've got a lunge. I love movement skills in games, so they did bug out quite terribly there. So it looks like I'm still spinning, I'm still spending mana. I couldn't shake it out. So let's go back into this passive system. Once you choose a mastery class, you'll gain access to the left side of each mastery. Okay, so Sentinel has a base class. It doesn't look like there is a left and a right side here. But when we go to the masteries, yeah, I see this chain. So I would only have access to this side unless I became a Void Knight. Same thing for Forge Guard or Paladin. This is actually quite a lot of skills. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's maybe a bit daunting. Uh, so let's just look at our base class. We've got Overwhelm, physical damage to melee attacks, increases their chance to stun, seems good. Juggernaut, uh, we have to, each point of strength increases armor by 4% and improves skills that scale with strength, such as Warpath and Reeve. Warpath is our spin, so we're probably going to take that, just because that gives me uh, fire and void resistance plus strength, which I assume also increases my damage. Yeah, so... Let's just go ahead and spend our points there for now. And uh, we'll move on. I don't want to spend a ton of time just playing through that. We also have a new system. So skill system introduction. Viewing augment trees. So you click on a skill. Click on the action bar to slot a skill into the selection panel. And you can specialize in skills. Okay, so I can basically pick my favorite skills and then make those skills better. I like that as well. Uh, using skills give you skill points. Okay, so Warpath is my spin. Uh, we, we're probably just going to stay with the spin here. Whoa, okay. So that is... That's relatively intense. Let's go ahead and specialize in that skill. That way I'm going to be able to gain points. And initially available to me, I'm going to have one, two, three, and four choices. 
We've got Iron Reach, deals damage in a larger area, 15% per point, seems very good. Quicksilver Wind, you have increased movement speed, uh, movement's usually good, less mana per second, and additional melee damage. So less mana per second is what I'm going to choose. I think uh, it, it seems like it's something that I've already struggled to keep up, so that's just what we're going to automatically start with. That lunge is, is really satisfying, actually. Uh, and it seems to recharge relatively quickly. Yeah, already able to do it again. Just kind of whack away at the bears and things here. Uh, the hammer, if anything, might feel lackluster. I think it's just because I really enjoy this spin, if I'm being honest. That could, that could be a problem. The spin does seem to get a little bugged, though. I, I definitely uh, remove my button press several times, uh, and it just continues to, to spin. I haven't switched over to controller yet. I think my preferred way to play these games is typically uh, mouse and keyboard. That being said, uh, I do want to give it a shot before we end the video here. It's a little over halfway. Uh, we'll probably switch. Okay, I'm seeing a question mark universal sign of quest here. Let's see if we have any additional inventory we need. So 45 armor still. Forging potential is something that it hasn't explained yet. So I do see that tooltip come up. It says forging potential. Even though these two things look extraordinarily similar to me, there's a there's a slight difference in that. Uh, we've got 11% chance to ignite something on hit. Um, but it's just automatically already put the better thing on. Ignite. Ignite on hit is odd. I, I, I haven't seen myself set anyone on, on fire. Uh, but two health regen actually looks better. Let's just go ahead and put that on there. Uh, armor and movement speed, way better. And we're just going to call that good to go. I am tempted to be doing a lot of that, but I'm just going to kind of be making some snap decisions as we go here. I do take damage relatively quickly. I will say that. A shard. Okay, we've protected a shard since the beginning of memory. No real explanation for it, but that person's dying, so I'm not going to hold it against him too much. If you're dying, you're you're not really responsible for for uh, explaining things to people. So I guess I do appreciate the. Uh... Oh, they felt bad about giving me a task. Okay, we've entered the cliffs. I'm gonna go ahead and switch to a controller really quickly. We'll see how that works. So we've got that enabled. I'm using a PS5 controller, um, and that seems to be quick and easy to pick up here. Works well, don't seem to have any issues with it. We continue to have bugs with the spin. So now my character is just, <laughs> just randomly spinning. Uh, but no effect this time, no mana drain. Uh, so at least it's not as bad. The looting process would definitely be worse with a controller, uh, even though I, I find the rest of this to actually be relatively uh, pleasant. Our lunge is going to be here. The lunge is something I need to get a little bit more in a habit of, uh, as it definitely appears strong. Right now, if I were to focus on skills, it's going to be the spin, and it's going to be the uh, the lunge. And it does target an enemy. It seems to be doing relatively well at targeting enemies, uh, even without having the, the mouse and keyboard. That's something I was worried about as well. Uh, I've played a couple of other ARPGs recently, and some of their automatic targeting with controller was poor, especially when the, the primary play or the primary console of choice for it was computer. Uh, so we've got another Chalice of Light. Again, this one has 6% increased damage over time instead of cast speed. There might be some benefits there, but I don't really have a whole lot of either. 
Uh, I'm just, again, being attacked away as I'm looking at other things. This is the good and bad thing about online games is uh, while you can play with friends and you can have a lot of interesting experiences here, uh, if you're not paying attention, it's not like you can pause, so. I faded into the wall there. So this smoke effect or dust effect, I actually don't really like. I think it ruins the look of the overall area. And uh, just, just kind of makes it a little hard to see, so. I'm a huge fan of that. I feel like my overall damage has gone down just a little bit, but it's probably that I'm scaling into other areas. Uh, let's go ahead and just keep going with the Juggernaut, because I don't really know what I'm doing yet. Uh, and we have a... Okay, we've got an additional skill for uh, Warpath as well. I'm complaining about damage, so let's just go ahead and take this. Uh, melee Void Damage plus 5 per point. And it's doubled if I had a two-hander, so I probably want to look for a two-handed weapon. And we'll do that as quickly as possible, especially since our shield is garbage. Uh, but it did actually increase the damage quite a bit there. I would, I would consider that pretty significant. And as long as the skill isn't getting stuck going, it actually does seem like we're able to sustain it for a fair amount of time. At least enough for any of the fights that we're going to be in at this stage of the game. Compulsion to just break things around me, which I don't, I don't know if that's a good thing or not. It seems like we might be getting to a little boss area. Um, there's just this wide open area. Nowhere to run, surrender to the shard. Okay, so not necessarily a boss, but it's going to maybe send waves at me, it seems. Oh, and we are stuck doing the spin again. Can't fix it. Drains our entire mana pool. That is awful. That's a good way to get you killed. We do at least regenerate our health relatively quickly, because I'm going to run away from this guy temporarily uh, until I kind of have some of my health back. They do... Ah, stuck spinning yet again. So I will say that is actually quite frustrating to bug out so much. I like the targeting that they're putting on the ground. Uh, it's very helpful. It might be unnecessary, but this is early in the game. Uh, again, we continue to just get stuck spinning. Sometimes those effects seem very awkward because it looks like it's going a completely different area, meaning it's not it's not targeting me at all. I don't really understand what this particular mob is doing or what it would be doing with those particular skills. I feel maybe a little under damaged here. This is probably where a pet class would really shine because I'm doing a fair amount of like just getting out of the way so I'm not taking damage here uh, whereas a pet class would probably have something constantly doing damage. Honestly I don't know maybe I shouldn't even be leaving. Um, it didn't do that much damage to me. This is our first yellow item, which I assume has a more increased level of rarity to it. Uh, let's find it. 30 armor. So exact same armor yet again, but it has more aff affixes, so more additional things to it. Uh, 30 armor, 22 forging potential, but we have 8 mana, 4% increased mana, and 9% physical resistance, as well as 6 health. So we're losing 26 armor to do this, uh, but I can't imagine a situation in which that is not better. Uh, so we're going to take that, and we're going to move along here. So you cannot lunge without a target. Uh, that that actually kind of disappoints me. Uh, I am a fan of having movement skills in games then be used when I want to run around. I like the woman is holding. Okay, shards calling to me. We are creating this weird rift thing, and I enter a rift. Okay, so we've completed our first quest. We have plus 30 experience. This is just my class symbol. I don't know if this is relevant, if you can get things that are non-class experience, and 50 gold. That feels low, but I'm not familiar with the game yet, right? So 50 gold doesn't sound like a lot in some games. Could be quite a bit here. No mobs, but 
an interesting change of scenery. Rangers and Elders. Don't look like a cultist. Okay. Um. Yeah, there's a last refuge. Talking about cultists. And he is going to guide us. Well, it doesn't look like he's going to guide us. It looks like he's going to follow us and kind of help us out in this dangerous area. We could definitely use some gear upgrades. We we are starting to feel a little low on the damage side. And uh, I continue to really struggle with, with that. I mean, now it does take a long time to get rid of my mana, but there's nothing I can do to shake it out, so... I've uh, got a flaming club here. Uh, let's go ahead and open it up. Uh, melee cold damage, 10 melee physical damage. We are going to go with a two-handed weapon. I'm going to get rid of that white shield. I think that's just better. I will say this as well. Um, you kind of see my inventory now. I absolutely hate this system. I'm, I'm just going to get that out of the way. I personally think that it is antiquated to do different sized inventory like this. Especially because you see I've only looted the blues. And my inventory is already relatively full. Uh, it just means it's going to end up creating a lot of problems for inventory management going down the road. And I just don't think it's necessary in a game nowadays. I'd really prefer uh, to kind of stay away from that. I like that there is apparently an automatic compare feature so I can mouse over things on the ground. And it compares it with the, the gear that I have equipped. So I could choose whether to pick these things up. Uh, until I know what this kind of thing sells for, if it's if it's worth actually keeping it, I probably am going to pick up the majority of these things. So 33% chance to ignite on hit, but I think our melee physical damage is more what we're actually trying to deal right now. We're going to kind of ignore that. We're about 25 minutes in, uh, he's created some kind of aura around him. Can't tell if it's really damaging me. It doesn't seem to be. Uh, briefly gains damage when hit regenerates health. So it's probably a regeneration aura. Uh, so this is a yellow shield. Interesting. So it was, a bu it was bugging a little bit on my movement there. I was struggling to keep it from continuing to move when I wanted it to stop. We are seeing more and more yellows come. So we might just kind of continue to move through these. Whoa, okay. Uh, so it looks like we now have found our first legendary. So that is good to see. We've got poison resistance, minion poison resistance, which is odd because I, I doubt this class has minions. And then 10% chance to summon a swarm of bees on a melee hit. Uh, well, that's clearly better than my, my nothings. So we're going to equip them. Uh, it's going to be really weird seeing bees just, just come out of nowhere as I start spinning around. But I really am looking forward to seeing that effect. So... See what we can do. I like the added void effect to the sword. That does look kind of nice. Um, and maybe that's just a change from me going to a two-hander. Um, but I think that's that's actually quite nice. We've, looks like we've made it either to the town or close to the town. Okay, they needed to protect them. Yep, we will accept and go find the guard captain. Help them kind of clear these things out that seem to be attacking the town. Lunge is still... Oh, there's the bees. The bees look out of place. I'm going to go with out of place. Not a bad thing. It's just... It's kind of weird. I don't know how I feel about those right now. It seems like we're moving relatively quickly. Um, the levels come relatively quick. We've got all our skills. I'm really only utilizing a couple of them, it feels like. Uh... Mostly the lunge, the spin, and the basic attack. Um, I think we're just going to continue going with that. Because, I again, I'm, I want to spend a lot of time just reading through this. So we've got a damage and less mana. Again, let's continue to go with damage. I feel like that's, that's where I'm struggling the most right now. So we're just going to keep going damage. I wonder when we're allowed to get a second skill into specializations. How quickly that's going to occur here. And you get the shard to the council chambers. Trap deeper in the city if he hasn't teleported himself back. Okay. God be with you. We've completed another quest. Head northeast towards the council chambers. 
We're just looking for this counselor to kind of teleport us out of this general area. Um, I did note that it looks like the time has changed. So when we went through that portal, we went through a rift of time. So maybe that is already the, the, the time traveling element. Uh, that's definitely interesting or unique. I didn't notice really the time change. It's too late for me, others are trapped in the outskirts. Okay, so I'm gonna help other people evacuate. And this is my first what looks to be optional or side quest. So that's good to see. I'm sure we're gonna get a lot of those. Uh, and now we have these orange items dropping. These are shards, so I assume those are gonna be I assume those are gonna be things that are primarily um, uh, primarily crafting in nature. It's hard to say yet because they haven't introduced crafting or any crafting elements. But I'm gonna guess that's gonna be part of a crafting mechanic. And with everything saying forge potential, I'm gonna guess crafting is a relatively large portion of the game or is gonna play a relatively large role. Actually, I feel like these bees do work. Um, I don't think I see all of their damage numbers come on screen, but it, it feels like they do work. I'm going to start moving just a little bit faster through this and see what actually happens if I start trying to push and be a... I don't, I don't want to say reckless, right? But if I start to actually just push through some things. Let's get that club. Ah, sadly a one-hander. I want to stay with the two-handers right now just because that is buffing the damage on my spin. My 29 minutes. I don't know where I was hoping to get, but... Let's uh, free this guy here. Cleared a path. Basically just telling him he's free to go. And we'll go kill a few more things. Stunning shrine lets me stun more. Now that is good to know. Uh, environmental targets work for the... Uh, charge and so I was actually able to to charge towards something that is going to be another complaint that I see here all of those shards all those crafting materials that I have no idea what to do with uh, they also appear in my inventory which means they're going to be just just mucking up space uh, and you can see I'm just leaving tons of stuff on the ground right now uh, without any intent to use it whatsoever and we we still haven't hit you know an ability to teleport back to to really do anything here. Uh, we also have another plus sign here. Skills and specializations. So what did I miss? Because it was a different symbol. And we have another another graphical bug here. Uh, we weren't able to get a few things off the screen. So I actually don't know what that was uh, or why it was staying there. Uh, we'll just continue. Got a new rebuke skill. Uh, so we are moving through our talent trees. I'm sure that's going to be a skill that I use. However, we have hit 30 minutes. So let's go ahead and give that timer a pause. We'll back out of the game here a little bit, and then I will give you some of my final thoughts or my kind of summary thoughts from what we're doing so far. All right, so we're back out to the character selection screen, and you can kind of see the way my character has changed in its looks and its feel as we play. Uh, it's a nice, chunky little model. Uh, there are things that I really like about it, things that I really don't like about it. But overall, I like the aesthetic of the characters, uh, especially once they're fully armored. Uh, so what did I think about the game? Graphically, it had moments that were both almost visually stunning and, and really enjoyable for a game like this. And then some awkward elements, too, where I almost thought things looked poor in nature. So we would go from these really nice, beautiful outdoor vistas to like kind of a sand area, which basically just looked like an overall blurry screen, which I didn't really like. I didn't think the particle effect looked good compared to what it was trying to achieve. Uh, so basically all I'm really saying there is overall on average graphics were fine, but they went to areas that were really good and areas that were kind of poor. Combat and skills and everything like that all felt pretty impactful. Uh, every single one of my skills did something a little bit different, had a little bit of a different flavor. And as I chose to specialize in them, they continued to do more things to be more impactful. I looked briefly into the additional things that your skills could do, and they actually do get much more complicated and much more interesting in their effects, 
while you necessarily may have only seen me do things like additional speed or additional damage or lowered mana cost. There is more, more to them and more modifications that you can make to the skill, which I actually think is really cool. There's a lot of the kind of play your way to this mentality. Now, Last Epoch does appear to be kind of riding the line in between Path of Exile and Diablo. And when I say riding that line, they're trying to be an easier Path of Exile, but it still seems they've fallen into a, a harder version than Diablo. Not necessarily harder in combat because I actually felt much more powerful as a character than I did when playing Diablo 4, which I often found underpowered. What I mean is the difficulty from the player to make an effective build and one that's going to work. Now, as you saw me playing this, I basically just played what I wanted. I picked things quickly, primarily because I was talking to you all and because I was trying to get through a first look. That has all been very successful so far, but I am level 7, and I know the game goes until 50 or 75. In Path of Exile, I did the exact same thing, but eventually... I learned in Path of Exile that you probably needed to go and find a build guide, and you probably needed to follow that exactly. Builds in that game are extraordinarily complex, and they take a lot to go. This one seems like it's going to ride the line between that difficulty and Diablo's simplicity pretty well. I'm looking forward to it so far, but that's one of the things that I think is out for, you know, the verdict is out on. You saw some minor bugs. This is an early access game. Now, it's an early access game that's been in early access for years, so I don't know how much credit I'm going to give it for that. Uh, the One of the base skills for me, the spinning skill, uh, bugged out quite a lot where it just got stuck into attacking. And for a game that's been in early access for so long, I don't really feel like that should have been the case. There were also a couple of times... Uh, where I got just some odd graphical bugs on the screen or some menus or something would have been stuck up. And so that was a bit frustrating, but it was never anything game-breaking and it never really ruined my experience or got me killed. The other thing is going to be the inventory system. The inventory system I just I just personally don't like. Uh, even Diablo has gone towards a explicitly all one size thing when it comes to your inventory. So you have a limit, but not everything is this puzzle piece thing. Now, a lot of games still do that. I played Superfuse recently, and that's what Superfuse does as well, but I don't particularly like it. Uh, it honestly ends up with me only picking up very, very, very specific things and a huge clutter screen of loot. Now, there may be a loot filter in this game. I hadn't looked for one yet because it hadn't become extraordinarily relevant, uh, but if it has a loot filter, it's probably going to get quite a bit of credit for that because I'm going to be able to go in and tailor it to my current needs um, and then that I will just won't see those messes again. I also don't really like that the shards of the crafting materials really started to junk up the inventory, especially since they started to do so before I was taught how to do any form of crafting. So I'm looking forward to learning all of those things, and right now I would say that my overall opinion of this game is that it appears to be a very solid build, a very solid thing for an ARPG fan, and I'm looking forward a lot to playing this game. In fact, I will likely go ahead and continue to play more of this game tonight. Now, if you like this uh, and you want to see more content like this, please consider giving me a like, a subscribe, or just some comments on constructive feedback. I'd really love to engage with you all as the community. And until next time, have a great time gaming.